The Democrat in Ohio won. The Democrat Greg Landsman uh, winning there. That is a switch. He beat uh, Congressman Steve Shabbat. Uh, that's a major headline there in Ohio in District 1. We'll get right to Rachel Scott in a moment. Ohio 9 tonight. The Democrat uh, Congresswoman Marcy Captor. The Republicans spent a lot of time. We're going to Ohio 9 now. Marcy Captor. They had targeted her. Her district had been changed. She was reintroducing herself in a Republican leaning district. But the Democrat, the incumbent Marcy Captor, holds on. She made the case in the end, let's go to the middle, that the, the people in the middle, the moderates of this country, their voices need to be heard. Uh, Ohio 13 tonight, the Democrat Amelia Sykes has won uh, in District 13 in Ohio. In North Carolina in 13, we're taking a look at this race. It's on our radar. We're not projecting a winner in North Carolina 13. Oh, we are now. Wiley Nickel, this is a switch. Uh, North Carolina, a switch to the Democrats. 99% of the vote in. That's significant. We'll get to Rachel on that as well. And in Florida 10 tonight, Maxwell Frost uh, has won there. A gun control activist. He beat Calvin Wimbish. Uh, we know that President Biden has called to congratulate him. Cecilia Vega told us earlier that the president had begun to call Democrats around the country who had pulled off not only upsets, but who had faced tough challenges and still pulled it out tonight. This is not necessarily the picture based on history we thought we would be at, at given this moment in the night. Doesn't mean Republicans aren't going to take the House, but it's still um, it's still up in the air. Yeah, and big picture here, David. You have two Republican seats that have flipped to Democrats. You have six Democratic seats that have flipped to Republicans. You just gave us some of those projections there. One key theme that I'm seeing here is that you have a lot of Trump allies that are being defeated. Jesse Otto Gilbert was campaigning with former President Donald Trump. Sykes able to win here. This is Tim Ryan's old district. Up here, you have uh, Majewski, who was at that rally on January 6th. Captor is the projected winner, the longest serving woman in the House. She'll get another term. And a lot of people didn't know her in the district because it was completely redrawn. She was reintroducing herself and reintroducing herself as a moderate Democrat who said, I'll take on both parties. Exactly. In a place that is just so red and so conservative, trying to appeal to the middle. And another one here where you have Greg Landsman, who has been the projected winner against uh, Shabbat, who actually rejected the results of the 2020 election. All right. Rachel Scott, who's tracking Congress for us. So what does this look like, Nate, at this uh, time of the night? Uh, Republicans still are favored to take back the House, but what does it look like? So North Carolina 13 is not even on our list of core races here. This is the next category over called likely and Democrats won it. So that shows the playing field is expanding into Republican territory. Um, I would still certainly bet on the GOP to keep the House, but there are now many more pathways that they can actually have a larger range of targets than we're showing here. You mean to take back control of the House? You're still you're to retain st control of the House. Right. Democrats. Oh, you say that again then, clearly. Yeah, so what I'm saying is that Democrats now have more opportunities to either flip GOP-held seats like North Carolina 13 or hold seats that we thought they were going to lose potentially. So they need to win the vast majority of these. But if they have additional options out down here, then it becomes more viable. I wouldn't bet on it, but it becomes like a, a liver proposition. So earlier in the night when you were talking about Aaron Judge and yeah. you told us that, that Democrats had like a 16, 17% chance of holding on to the House, which is low, but not impossible. Where do you think we are at this hour? The New York Times has an estimate that's about double that now. It's about 30 some percent. So still a pretty solid GOP advantage, but you know, you may see it capped at a narrow Republican majority and the margin of error would include Democrats keeping their majority. I mean, Mary Bruce, did we think based on what your sources were telling you that we would be talking at midnight in the East about the possibility that Democrats would be holding out of the House here? I don't think so. I mean, I think Dem Democrats really, as Cecilia was mentioning earlier, they thought that the House was pretty much gone. I mean, I think Democrats are feeling very good about this night. Do they think they're still going to hold on to the House? I don't think so. But certainly they think they're doing better than they thought they would. And, you know, I keep thinking about your conversation a couple minutes ago with Senator Coons, of course, a close ally of President Biden's. And he kept saying over and over again that they were beating the historic trend. Repeatedly, he said that, making the point, you know, that even if Democrats don't win back, the, don't excuse me, don't retain the House, that they're still doing better than they expected. And I think the way that he said it was to make the argument that that means that Joe Biden is doing better than everyone expected. Well, I think that's what we're sensing. I mean, listen, these storylines are still emerging, but John Carl, make no mistake. Uh, I mean, history would tell us that perhaps the Republicans at the end of the night will be in control of the House, but certainly not by the numbers that we were looking at very early in the night of, of years past. This is not the night 
that Republicans thought they were going to have. They are losing races that they were certain they were going to win. The, the North Carolina 13 seat, this was Bo Hines. He's 27 years old. He's a uh, you know, former football star for North Carolina State. Big Trump guy. Uh, they expected he was going to win there. Uh, he's lost there. They were expecting they were going to win a seat in Rhode Island. They were saying, we're going to have a Republican in Rhode Island. They lost that seat. They thought they would beat Spanberger in Virginia. They lost that seat. They thought they would beat Marcy Kaptur in Ohio. They lost that seat. So, yes, Republicans still have a lot of ways to get to the mere five seats they need to win control. But if they win control of the House, David, this will be a very narrow majority for Republicans. Really interesting. Governor Christie, does this surprise you? A little. A little, but I think there's a lot more to come in. Um, I just talked to three candidates in New York, 17, 18, and 19. I think all three of those are very optimistic they're going to win, including knocking out Maloney. In New Jersey 7, which hasn't been called yet, Tom Kane Jr. is, is 15,000 votes ahead of the incumbent Democrat with 99% of the vote in. That hasn't been called yet or flipped. So there's still a lot to go. Oregon 5 up by five points in Oregon. Um, so I think there's still a lot more to go. I think you're going to get into, you know, significant double digits, 15 to 20, by the time we get done with the night. 15 to 20. All right. Well, the math certainly still is there. And on the Republican side, it's just not nearly uh, as great as history tells us with some of these previous uh, midterm elections. So we got a long night still ahead of us. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.